Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to touch on one of my favorite topics in the world of boa breeding, and that is, of course, the holdbacks. I'm going to show you some of my favorite holdbacks from the last five years of breeding boas, and I also am going to touch on what I look for specifically in an animal that qualifies me to hold it back to become the next generation of breeding stock. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to Brian Boas' YouTube channel for more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. The peak of the boa breeding year for me, and I believe a lot of other boa breeders, comes in the summer and early fall when the females are finally due to give birth. There's a huge amount of work that goes into reaching this milestone. Um, just countless hours spent cleaning cages and feeding snakes and doing all of the other countless tasks that one has to do to have a successful reptile breeding operation. When the babies are finally here, I really feel like a kid on Christmas morning. Going through those babies and just admiring how beautiful they are, it can even be an emotional experience. It's really something that you have to experience to understand how it is. If you're new to breeding reptiles, I believe the best way to get a really world-class group of breeding animals is to hold back your favorite animals, um, grow them up, and then after several generations, you can shape the project in the direction that you want and really produce some world-class animals. So I'm gonna start in 2014, which was the first year that I produced Suriname red tail boas. And this guy I knew from the beginning was gonna be the holdback. He just really stood out from the rest of the litter mates. He has this super clean pattern um, his shape and symmetry of his saddles is just practically perfect. Um, just a really beautiful boa. It's also a little bit lighter in color than most of the other litter mates. And just this gorgeous long red tail. Both of his parents had okay saddles. They weren't, I wouldn't say they were quite perfect. I mean, they're beautiful looking boas. But this guy just really combines the best qualities of both of his parents. Uh, so right now he's about five and a half years old. He's ready to breed. I'm not sure if I'm going to pair him up this year though. But you can see he's maybe four and a half feet long. So he's been slow grown. Um, he's probably not going to get too much bigger than this. You know, I've been feeding him the last couple of years about every three weeks or so. Um, I might push him back to about every four weeks now that he's pretty much full grown. But um, just a beautiful animal and my favorite from my first litter of two red tail boas. In 2015, I produced my first litter of Pacalpa Peruvian boas, and this girl was just a standout from the rest. Um, she just had this really beautiful light coloration, almost an ivory look to her. And she also had this kind of really cool, a little bit funky shape to her saddles. But I just really liked um, the look of this particular animal. Some of the Peruvians have these really thin saddles and the saddles don't even touch in the center. Personally, I don't like that look. I know it's really popular, but personally, I like kind of a, a little bit wider saddle like in this particular animal. So this girl, um, you can see she's a little bit bigger than the Suriname male I just showed you, even though she's a year younger. She's actually been on the same feeding schedule um, my, these Peruvians were really big at birth. They were almost two feet long at birth. Quite a bit bigger than my Surinams from the 2014 litter. And they've just grown a little bit faster. So she may be ready to breed next year, um, or it might be the following year. I'll just have to see how she does and before I decide when I'm going to pair her up. Another holdback from 2015 is this female Argentine boa, boa constrictor occidentalis. And this animal really has a special place in my heart. Um, but Argentine boas are probably my all-time favorite locality boa. They were the first locality boa I owned and the first one that I bred. I actually got my first pair of Argentine boas in 1998. And then I tried to breed them about three or four years later. Wasn't successful. And then finally I had babies in 2005. And then um, I had another litter in 2007, but by then I was busy with my family and work and, you know, some non-reptile related pursuits. 
So I always had snakes, but they kind of took a back burner. And then in 2010, I got my first red tail boa, and that kind of kicked off my, you know, modern uh, reptile hobby that I've been working at for about the last 10 years. Um, I bred the original pair again in 2015, and I got this litter of which this animal um, was one that I held back. And then unfortunately, those two original boas both passed away a few years ago. They were about 20 years old. Um, so this boa really is special for me because she kind of bridges the original period when I had bred boas to the period now. Um, and she's a living reminder of those first boas that were really special to me. She's probably not even, maybe a four feet or so. Um, both of her parents were eight to nine feet. So she might get quite a bit bigger. Um, but it will probably take at least another few years at the rate that she's been growing. In 2016, I had a litter of Suriname red tail boas, which was very long awaited. The father of this litter was probably my most famous boa, whose name is Prometheus. He just has this really, really long red tail and the super high contrast markings on his body. You may have seen a picture of him online. Um, but I finally had this litter. I ended up keeping most of the litter for myself to grow up, and I'm raising them right now. This particular animal is probably the most, one that most resembles his father. You can see he's got this ridiculously long red tail. It might be the longest reddest tail I've seen in a true red tail boa. He's got these high contrast markings. Um, the other thing I like about this boa is that he's kind of got a wild, somewhat dirty look to him. You can see he's got a lot of freckles and splotches and background markings. His saddles are peaked, but they're not overly symmetrical. So he looks like something you might encounter out in the rainforest. Um, it's probably going to be a few years before I have any babies from these guys, but possibly the males could be paired up in another couple of years or so. So I hope to pr produce the next generation of this pro project in the not too distant future. I know a lot of people have expressed interest in owning an animal of this lineage, and hopefully we can make that happen for you. In 2017, I had a litter of crawl key boas, and this particular guy decided, decided to hold back. Um, he's just super light in color. He has this beautiful ashy, silvery gray look to him. He also has this, in the right light, he has kind of this purplish look. Just a real beautiful animal. So he's right now, he's maybe two and a half or three feet. Uh, so he's probably got at least another foot or so to put on before he's going to be ready for breeding. So possibly he could breed in another maybe two to three years. Um, but just a real neat dwarf boa to work with. Um, you know, I say I like the Terra Humara as my favorite dwarf, but sometimes I think I like these guys even better than the Terra Humara. Another animal I decided to hold back in 2017 is this Guiana True Red Tail Boa. And this particular animal has this crazy unique look. He really doesn't look much like your typical Guiana Red Tail Boa. You can see his markings are quite a bit darker. You can see his tail, rather than being bright red, it's more of a brick red, almost maroon in color. He's also got um, like a lot of pink to his sides, this crazy pinkish purplish side color. Beautiful peak saddles, but peaked in kind of a really crazy aberrant way. And then just loads and loads of background markings. I mean, this guy really embodies what I call the dirty look, just beautiful looking animal. I'm not exactly sure about my plans for him though, because I only have one pair of adult Guiana boas that I'm breeding. Um, they're from Mike, uh, Mike Eckert bloodline. And so I have this one particular hold back. I've been looking for a potential girlfriend for him for quite a while, but I really haven't come across any other Guiana boas that have a similar look. And I don't want to breed him to just your typical one of the middle Guiana boa with, you know, the clean background and the bright red tail. I want something that 
kind of looks like this. So I'll just have to see what happens. Um, hopefully I'll find the right girlfriend for him eventually. My favorite holdback from 2018 is this male Honduran fire belly boa. So as you can see, he's partially patternless. You know, the first part of his body, um, you can see there's no saddles. And then he has these eight, these eight really nicely formed symmetrical saddles. And then the last part of his body is also patternless with just this really cool stripe. He's also got this beautiful orangey pink side and belly colors. Um, the mother of this animal is probably the most orange fire belly boa that I've seen. She is just really spectacular. And this guy's colors have just been developing over the last uh, year or so. And so hopefully he'll be as spectacular as his mother when he's an adult. The Honduran fire bellies are a really cool boa. One of the cool things that they have is this really unusual head shape. They have this really short, kind of fat looking head. Um, and then they also have really beautiful eyes, these big orange prominent eyes. One of the most beautiful eyes I've seen in a boa constrictor. This brings us to last year, 2019. And so as you probably can guess, I'm really starting to run out of time and space for all of these holdbacks. So I only held back a single pair of boas from my baby, my 2019 babies. And it was a pair of these Pearl Island boas, boa constrictor saboge. And this is the female. And she's just absolutely beautiful looking animal. These saboge boas have really grown on me. I didn't really, wasn't really fond of them when I first got them, but I'm just recognizing how beautiful and spectacular they are as, as uh, boas to keep in captivity. You can see this particular animal is pretty much patternless. You can see she just has the, a few of these uh, reddish brown blotches on her side. And then her tail has these beautiful orangey brown uh, tail saddles. Just a very light, beautiful color to her. Just a spectacular animal that I look forward to watching grow up over the next five years or so. Those are my favorite holdback boas from my last five years breeding boas. I hope this video has given you a pretty good idea about the types of boas that you might expect me to produce over the last, next five years or so, and maybe even inspired you about what to look for when you're selecting your own holdbacks. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can write them below. Also, please feel free to reach out to me on social media if there's anything I can help you with. Thanks for your attention and enjoy your boas.